We're back with more Tapped Out with Brendan Tobin and Sean Levine on the BetQL Network. Very excited to talk to our next guest. You guys know we love the fight game down here, and uh, this man is the authority on all things uh, in all MMA, but I mean, this guy is like the godfather of refereeing. So a very big thrill to talk to big John McCarthy for the first time. Uh, big John, thanks for the time, man. Really appreciate you. Brendan, I appreciate that. Thank you very much. It's nice talking to you with you, man. Hey, I'm, we want to get into this PFL thing and I want to get the belt and all that, but I got to get your reaction to last week, the bite. I mean, I'm watching this and I'm like, I, I, I wasn't, I was, I tuned into the car late. So I get a, a notification on my phone. I'm like, fighter disqualified for biting and i'm like all right there's no way and i'm like i tune in i'm seeing this and i'm there's always a way i'm like how (laughs) How? but how have you first of all have you ever in your refereeing encountered a bite and did you go disqualification like and and just what was your reaction to bite gate last week you know it's it's funny because you know the when i started let's just you know go back into the the caveman days because when i started there was two rules no biting and no eye gouging. You could groin shot. Mm-hmm. Okay. That was UFC two. Okay. But at, I think it was UFC five. I had a guy that he was, he, he bit, he tried to eye gouge, but I wasn't allowed to disqualify him. So all it was is I was taking money from him. So you know, that, that happened all the way back at UFC five, but no, I have had guys bite. I've had ones where it is, it's the guy actually putting a submission on them that you know ends up squeezing in a way that their mouth is open and, and it's not a bite it's their teeth are imprinted on the person but it's only one row basically because the mouthpiece is the other this one this one was unique in the fact that not only did he he was in control of the actual situation and the action he took his mouthpiece out to be able to get the bite that he did and that's where you just look and you go no you know, it was funny because the commentators at the time were, oh, you shouldn't just, just disqualify or anything like that. And and I understand why they were saying that. And then they saw it and they go, oh, yeah, he should be disqualified because you, you can't have someone doing that type of thing in the sport. It, you know, it shows they have a total lack of professionalism. They are absolutely not mentally prepared to compete at that level. And they're going to do those kind of things. You don't want that in your promotion or your sport. Yeah, I didn't even think about that. You had to take out your mouthpiece to do that. That's, did. Cra- that's crazy. Had, exactly. That's where people are like, I said, do you realize that he actually had to remove, at least drop his mouthpiece off into his you know, cavity of his mouth to get the bite that he got? I mean, it's crazy. Man. Oh, that's uh, that's wild. All right. So uh, I was, this is a couple, man, maybe like a month ago, you guys had your, the, the launch of like the union between PFL and Bellator it was a very, very cool event in Saudi Arabia. February 24th. Yeah. Yeah. So it was, it was pretty cool to see that down here in South Florida and see all these distinguished champions put together. How have you thought of the blend so far? That's a very big deal to put these two promotions together. What have you made of the unity so far? You know, obviously there's going to be, you know, questions about, you know, well, where do I fit in? And that's for everyone, every fighter, everybody in the whole thing. But overall, for the two promotions, especially when you look, the UFC is the big gorilla out there. And Bellator had had a really good lineup. They really do. And the PFL, I think, was a little bit behind, you know, Bellator in the, in the level of fighters they have. And so with one move, You've, you've put it to where the PFL now has an incredible array of fighters that they're actually putting some of those fighters into their season tournament, which is only going to you know elevate everybody in that. They have the ability to do the Bellator shows where they have single matchups and they have championship fights. And just the fact that the roster that they now have, you know, just available for them to use is going to just make the fight so much better. I, I I look at the heavyweights because heavyweights everywhere are lacking. Let's just be honest. You know, you just don't have a, a big talent pool. You look at the 135 pounders or the 145 pounders. I mean, there's so many good guys. You can go down the list of UFCs one to 15. You can go down Bellator's one to 10. You go down the PFL, you know, in the 145s and there's really good fighters in every one of those promotions and all, and that those weight classes. And then you look at the heavyweights and man, there's five, 
maybe six that you can say that those are, those are really good fighters. And the other ones are lacking in areas. And so at least with, you know, Bellator and the PFL getting together, you can look at the heavyweight division. It already has been rejuvenated by Ante D'Elia is going to be taking on Valentin Moldovsky, a guy he never would have had the opportunity to fight before. Now it's happening. They can put that together. Uh, they have Goldsoff, who was in the tournament last year. He's taken on the Bellator guy in Linton Vassell. Now, he won't be a Bellator guy, but he's a Bellator guy. So it really has made it to where they can now make some really good matchups and give people a, a much better product overall just based upon the talent pool that they're now working with. Yeah, I think one of the things that I've liked, like I've always felt like Bellator – uh, such a great eye for talent and like some of the the guys that they're able to find. But the one thing I do love about PFL and Bellator, the old school Bellator had this with Bjorn Redmi that would come down here to the Hard Rock back in the day. Like the tournament yeah. style is really really fun. But that night they had that. Uh, I want to say it was like November twenty one, like right out of the fresh of the pandemic. That night where like a guy's life changes, getting a million dollars is like yeah. one of the coolest nights because you could just see like you know, guys who had to do part-time security, like their life changes. And that's, that's, you know, fighter pay is such a big thing that is always talked about, but I think that's a really cool thing that the, the PFL just kind of puts that, 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 that golden nugget at the end of all of it. Yeah. You got to figure that they're, they're, well, what was it was, it's not going to be, but what was their last show of the year was a very expensive show for them because they were given out, you know, I, I think six weight classes of a million dollars, you know, to the, to the winner. And that's, that's so incredibly inspiring and it makes a fighter want to be there. And it's the one thing that I, you got to look at the PFL and say, they've got, they've been doing something right in the fact that I haven't been there. So it's not me. I'm not saying it, but I can only think of Kayla Harrison is the fighter that, you know, started really, they, they put their, you know, their emphasis behind because she's a two time Olympic gold medalist. She's the only fighter that's really left them. All the other fighters that have signed with, no, none of them have left. There's been ones that have retired or things like that, but they haven't left. And so obviously the PFL is doing something right for the fighters. They're making them feel good as far as what they're doing. They're making, they're giving them the right pay. And look, they're going to have to pay more. Uh, you know, Bellator and the PFL, they have to pay more money to get those fighters based upon, hey, that's when you are fighting to, you know, match up to that giant. You're going to have to give that emphasis for someone to say, yeah, I want to fight for you. It's good. It's such an interesting thing too, because you know, you say like, you know, everybody and it does feel like the fight community is so tight knit. And it's such an interesting thing. Like down here in South Florida, we have a lot of great gyms, but like American top team, all of these guys train with one another. So yes. like a UFC oh. guy and a Bellator guy are, they're getting each other ready. Like Dustin, one of my, my friends, Dia Davis, like he trains Dustin Poirier, Johnny Evelyn. They worked, you know, together a lot oh. of the time. And it's like, there you go. it's gotta be an interesting thing for guys who are in the pro. You say, well, I can't go. With these. these guys obviously know that they can go with these guys. Like they've, they probably oh. have more rounds than they ever do on the bright lights. Yeah. The fighters, look, if there's one thing fighters know and trainers know, they know who's good. And, you know, they all train around each other. And, you know, there's ones that are out there that, you know, they get, you know, they have that, you know, backing with the marketing of the UFC. And, man, people will say, he'll beat anybody. But I can pick it, pick out somebody probably. They'll say, that guy right there has got at least a 50-50 chance of beating him. And well, that's because there are those guys out there. And the coaches and fighters, they all know. I talk to them all the time. And, you know, and I'll say, hey, how is so-and-so? I know he's training with... You know, this world champion is training with this world. Who's getting the best? You know, and they'll say, oh, you know, so-and-so every time gets the best of them. Don't, don't, you know, don't say anything about it. And I don't, I would never do that. You don't lose, you know, you don't, you know, say those things because you, you lose confidence from people. But the, the, the top people are in that position and it's hard to explain to people how close they are because we'll still sit there and they'll say, well, percentage points, what are they like? 5% better? 5%. We're talking not even a tenth of a percent makes a huge difference at that level. Talking to Big John McCarthy, I should mention PFL has just announced their next regular season, April 4th on ESPN2 and ESPN+. Plus. You guys can watch heavyweight regular season. Women's flyweight regular season is getting going, uh, and they got basically every week then thereafter the regular season is underway. Is there one in this season? Is there a matchup, somebody, Big John, that you are like most excited about? Oh my God. And we, you know, if you're going to talk about the whole season, it's tough, but if you're going to talk about the first one here, I mean, there is just so many good fights 
that are coming out. And, and like I said, you have the, the Valentin Moldovsky versus, you know, Ante D'Elia, who is, you know, that's the main event. And a lot of times, you know, they'll do the main events with, you know, the heavyweights. And I go, ah, oh, you should have put this one or, you know, put a little bit different one. But this one is actually a great matchup. The way Ante D'Elia fights and where he's good and what Moldovsky, because Moldovsky is, he's the hybrid heavyweight. He's not real big. He's a 235, 38 pound, you know, heavyweight, but he's fast. He's mobile. He's good everywhere. He's got good wrestling. He's got good stand up. He's got a great submission game. So he creates problems for everyone with speed. Same as, you know, his mentor is Fedor. And that's what made Fedor so good. He was so much faster than all the other heavyweights that they, they had to work super hard to try to keep up with him. And, uh, that fight right there is going to be just an incredible fight, but there there's great fights throughout this season. You know, uh, you know, Dakota Davichova, who's coming into the, you know, flyweights, you know, she won the European title last year. Now she's going to go and uh, fight on this one. And she's, you know, got, she could end up fighting Liz Carmouche, who is uh, the flyweight champion of Bellator. Uh, Liz has got a very tough opening match. It's her third fight against, you know, Juliana Velasquez. So there's so many good fights on the card. They're starting it off right. Was uh, I mean you've been there since the beginning of this thing, but but calling all the Fedor fights that you did. I mean, is is his aura still like? Is that is that legit? Like, are there still? Is he on a different? Because I remember he was like the first guy that my friend saw me about. Like, hey, you got to come watch a Fedor fight. He ended actually. Ended up, I think he ended up losing. But like, you got to watch this guy Fedor. He's like he's the the scariest guy out there. I think it maybe it was for affliction or something like that. Um, now, but, if it, affliction he won the first the time he lost uh the, it was 30 basically depending upon if you count the a loss that japan gave him when he got headbutted or i see elbowed in the face when you weren't allowed to elbow and he got a cut and they they, they gave him a loss on that one he had like 31 wins in a row it's uh, he's just yeah the, but like the, the aura like is it is it that because you I mean, imagine being in the fight game there's not many guys that could probably you know have that for you but did, did fedor have that yeah, you know, it's funny because I, I actually became good friends with Fedor. And it, the first time that I refed him was, I want to say, an affliction. And it was against Andre Arlovsky. And, uh, you know, he was getting beat. Andre was putting it on him. And, you know, Andre was feeling really good in that fight, did a jump knee and got hit in the middle, in midair and was out going down. You know, and I, I just looked at him and said, how in the hell did you land that, right? But okay. And then I, you know, I actually worked out with him after that. And that's when I realized, oh, this dude is just fast. I have to work really hard to keep up with him. And, you know, and, and so I see where guys are having a lot of problems with him. You know, I thought just looking at him, maybe he's just like, you know, super strong or something. That wasn't it. He was super fast. But yeah, he had that aura. And it was that aura because of the way that it, it's, it's all about the way he conducted himself. He conducted himself with class. He never said a bad word about one opponent. He never, you know, he, he didn't, you know, he doesn't trash talk. He just has classy, but he would walk out. He would have a stoic face, you know, the whole Russian, you know, don't smile. Don't, you know, look in any direction. You know, he would raise one hand, you know, when they introduced him, he would go out, knock his opponent out, raise his hand back and leave the ring. You know, and it's like so goosey. That's so cool. He he was special. He was really special. And he's a great guy. He is an absolute gentleman, a wonderful human being to be around. He's got a great sense of humor. He's a huge practical joker. He will pull practice. If he if he's comfortable with you, look out. You're in trouble. <laughs> Uh, and just what's your excitement level to see Francis back in MMA? Francis Ngannou, uh, we obviously saw the age of I mean, so cool that he was able to do that. Like to, yeah. to bet on himself and do what he did to Tyson Fury and get in the ring with AJ was awesome. Very tough knockout, but like I cannot wait to see him back in MMA. What's your excitement level to see him back in the cage? That's the same thing. And, and, and honestly, my excitement level based upon what happened in Saudi Arabia uh, before his fight with AJ when uh, Heenan Fahev knocked out Ryan Bader super fast. He Heenan is just a huge individual, six foot eight, a good six foot eight, probably six nine, six ten, and he is absolutely a guy that matches up really well with Francis. And so you can take that fight and put it together, and you have something. You have a huge heavyweight matchup with Francis coming back and facing Heenan. So I think it, you know I can't wait to see him come back to MMA. I love I love what he did with the whole boxing thing and trying and stuff, but 
it's so hard for people to understand how difficult that crossover is when you know you you're facing people that have spent you know a lifetime just working on their hands that's their whole thing their footwork and their hands and now you've been working on not only your footwork and your hands and your kicks and your elbows and your ground game and your jujitsu and your wrestling you can't match up it's it's so much to catch up and that's why he was what he did against uh tyson fury was just amazing and that's why everyone loved about it but you know He's an MMA, MMA fighter. I want to see Francis back in an MMA cage. Big John McCarthy, thanks so much for the time, man. Go watch PFL's upcoming season. It starts up April 4th, ESPN2 and ESPN+. Plus, and you guys can see all month long as their heavyweight regular season and women's flyweight regular season is underway. Awesome that they got the rosters together. It should be awesome for the sport. Big John, it was a thrill, man. Thank you so much for the time. Brennan, thank you very much.